My name is Stephanie Sidlick and I'm an assistant professor of chemistry at Carnegie Mellon University. One of the challenges of the stay at home order um, during this COVID-19 outbreak has been that we chemists have been taken out of our labs. And so, so much of chemistry is hands-on and it's really in, an important part of chemical education to actually be able to see and experience the concepts that we're learning in class. And so today I thought I would bring you a class from my kitchen and that we would do a little bit of kitchen chemistry. So I teach a graduate course called the Molecular Basis of Polymer Mechanics. And actually just last week we had a lecture about polymer cross-linking. And so what this is, is plastics are made of these long linear molecules called polymers. And to make these polymers stronger, uh, we can do something known as cross-linking. So cross-linking creates chemical bonds between each of these individual strands of spaghetti to give you a cross-linked polymer. And so technically we call this a thermoset, and you can also call this a hydrogel. Now hydrogels are a little bit different in that they have water mixed in with the polymer strands. Um, we'll talk about that as we go along today, but we can do a nice experiment in the kitchen with just chemicals and uh, materials we have around the house to show how as we add in more of these cross link points, we can make these linear polymers stronger and stronger. Okay, so to do this, what you'll need is some Elmer's glue, some borax, and a mixing bowl. Now we'll add in some water too, because technically we're making a hydrogel. Um, and for this, it's not really important the ratios or the amounts of what we'll add in. So you can find recipes. Um, today we're making a hydrogel called slime. Um, you'll find recipes with exact amounts, but since we're learning about the chemical concept of cross-linking, we're actually going to experiment by adding more or less cross-linker to see what that does to the resulting mechanical properties of the gel. So to begin, we'll start with our Elmer's glue and you just kind of take all of it and put it into your mixing bowl. Now before we start getting our hands dirty, let's start by looking at, chemically speaking, what are we playing with? So Elmer's glue is actually polyvinyl alcohol. So you know, if you took my class or if you took organic chemistry one with me, you can take an alkene and poly polymerize it using radical polymerization to make a polymer like this. Unfortunately, that doesn't work with vinyl alcohol. So actually what we have to do if we want to make polyvinyl alcohol with a simple radical polymerization is polymerize polyvinyl acetate, and then we knock off this acetate group once we have the polymer to get to the polyvinyl alcohol. Now, borax, on the other hand, is this crazy looking molecule over here. Um, it is a molecule full of these boron oxygen bonds. Now, critically, what's going to happen here, these boron oxygen bonds, they're labile. So what that means is the oxygen there will exchange with water either in our hydrogel or in the atmosphere or perhaps in our polymer. Um, and when we form these bonds with these labile boron oxygen bonds, that's going to give us a cross-linking point. And as we add in more borax, we're adding more cross-linker, which then should result in more cross-linking points and a lower molecular weight between cross-links which then will give us a stiffer material. So let's see if that happens. If you actually want to measure this, we can. So all you need for that is a paper plate, and we're going to take uh, three blobs of slime of different cross-linking densities, and then actually measure creep. Uh, we won't measure creep today. I'll leave you with the plate with them, and then you'll get to see in the future what polymer creep is as your slime flows. So let's get back to the hands-on, the fun part. So we take our bottle of glue and we dump the whole thing into our mixing bowl. All of it in there. 
Now, next we're gonna add some water to dilute our polyvinyl alcohol even further. There's already water in here, but we wanna make sure that we're giving the bonds room to form, because it's pretty gooey as is. Still going. Now, the one kind of rule of thumb with hydrogels, the more water you add, the softer the material. And if we end up with too soft of a material, the molecular weight between crosslinks is going to be too high for it to be a solid. It will be left as a viscous liquid. So to kind of prevent that, you want to make sure that you're adding less water than you added glue or polyvinyl alcohol. Um, so this is an eight ounce bottle of glue. Um, I didn't quite get all of it in. Um, but here we have a cup of water and we know we want to put in less than a cup of water because we want less wall water per volume than polymer. So I'm going to put about half of it in. We'll stir it up. So this shouldn't take too long. You can see in the bot in the bowl that we're starting to get kind of polymer fibrils, but really, this is a viscous liquid. So if you took my class, you would know that the loss modulus, which represents the uh, viscous component, is higher than the storage modulus, which represents the elastic component at this point. And if you haven't taken my class, hopefully I'm exciting you to want to take my graduate class in the future. So once this is nice and, and hom homogenous, you want to see kind of no real water puddles in your glue. I took and added my borax to a small shaker bottle and I added some food coloring just so we can visually see how much we're adding. And I'm going to start by adding some. So we'll add in some. probably do still want to uh, keep your glasses on just because even though we're in the kitchen, you can still have some splash and uh, borax is a pretty heavy duty cleaning solution. Okay, so I added it in and we're starting to see kind of these strings of polymer coming on up. But nothing, uh, we're not really cross-linking yet. So let's, let's add some more in. And to, in this bottle, I have a saturated solution. So that just means I added as much borax to this solution as I could. It helps if you add warm water, kind of universally. We're starting to see a pink in here, and we're starting to see, oh, we're getting a more goo now. So we're gonna keep adding our cross-linker. Shake it up before you add it, because really, quite saturated, um, so I have some on the bottom and then every time I add it, I'm trying to get a little bit more in. Now you can see we really have a good goo going in there. So let's take our first time point, our first sample. So this is our lowest amount of crosslinker and we'll isolate our goo. So just to kind of speed up the process for us, I am now taking um, some of the goo out and I'm going to break it roughly into thirds. So I take one third right here and I'm going to put it on the plate in a circle. Now the rest of the goo here, I'm going to add a little bit more of the crosslinker to it right on top there and knead it in. Just kneading it nicely, playing with your slime. Don't think you would have gone into chemistry if you didn't like getting your hands dirty. I know I certainly wouldn't. Okay, there we go. Now it's getting tougher, harder to break. Another blob, so this is our medium. And then this is gonna be our stiffest blob, the one with the most cross links in there. So we just added some more drops and we're going to knead that in, knead that in. 
Um, what we're doing is actually forming chemical bonds here, like I said, between that boron and the oxygen. Um, and we can add even more in here. We really want to make sure that we uh, cross-link it all up. Okay. Now we have our last blob. And you can kind of already see what I'm what we're trying to show. So we have our lowest amount of cross-linker here our medium here and our highest here. And what I want you to do is actually trace the blobs with a pen. And then you're gonna let the blobs sit for a few hours. Now what you'll find is when you have the lowest amount of crosslinker, that's gonna spread much more than this one, which has the highest amount of crosslinker. And what that is is a phenomenon known as creep. Um, and we talked about this in my class as well. Um, but basically, over time, polymer materials will relax. Um, and I guess, most technically speaking, because we aren't applying a stress, this is m maybe more stress relaxation than creep. Um, but I think really this is creep because the force we're looking at is gravity. So the slime is fun to play with, but uh, what are we doing? Well, we have a slightly slimed slime right here. So what happens is these alcohols, these OHs in the polyvinyl alcohol, will exchange with those OHs in the borax. This is what will create that network with these boron oxygen bonds that act as crosslinks. And as you add more crosslinker in, you're adding in more points that kind of these polymer chains can entangle. And so as you add in more borax, you end up with a tighter network, kind of a tighter fishnet, if you will. And this is a lower molecular weight between crosslinks, and it will result in a stiffer polymer material. So hopefully you learned something about organic chemistry and polymers from this. And uh, hopefully you had a little bit of fun making your slime um, so you can keep this and play with it. Um, different colors, um, and yeah. So that's what I have for today. Um, I know that maybe the kitchen isn't quite as much fun as our regular laboratory, but hopefully you did have some fun with this. So thanks for tuning in.